so I wasn't really excited when I heard the news that Roll recently acquired Mackey. Or maybe it is a good maybe it's a maybe it is good news, but I wasn't really too happy about it because okay, I have history with Mackey. I remember when I bought my first speakers. Mackey Speakers HR 824s, I believe. And then I went and got a second pair, which were the HR 624s. And I also have the Big Knob. I still have those. The Big Knob was in the studio. It was pretty much the the, the brain of what, what I was hearing, what set of speakers I was listening to. Made by, made by Mackey. It was, it was one of the best dope features I feel like they've always been cutting edge because on that big knob, there is a a button you press. It's a talk button, studio button. Bigger studios are already built like this with a talk, what is it, talk to the artist, a talk back feature, right? Hit that button, you talk to the artist that's singing on the other side of the glass. Well, the big knob is for us people that don't work in those big studios in our smaller basement setups, bedroom setups or whatever, portable booths, right? And we are able to talk to the artist that way with the little knob that comes on that device. So that thing can switch between different three different sets of speakers with a talk back feature. Brilliant, right? I love that thing. Um, I probably own something else, Mackie. But I've seen all several of their speakers floating around. I've worked with a lot of their mixer. Did I say speakers? Their mixers. I've seen se several, several, several of their they mixers. I've worked with all analog stuff, you know, 24 channel to the small ones, the eight channel, the four channel, whatever. Anyway, it's, it's like a million of their products floating around pro audio gear you know what i mean they have a a thick history and to be bought out by road you know i wasn't when i when i when i so i recently bought the Mackie dlz i put out a video and i'm working on another video to put out and I'm just looking at some stuff, you know what I mean? And then that popped up. I was like, no, really did I? So, um, Rode is a good name too. I'm not going to lie. I own their wireless go mic system. And I thought that that was brilliant. That was innovation to me and how the, how it worked at like the quality for, for me. From a, from a company like that. You know what I mean? I, I've seen some other wireless systems, but for videographers such as myself, being able to clip it onto your your camera and, and I just thought it was cool. It was like different. You know, it's not your normal lapel situation. It's just, it was different. It was, it seemed kind of cool to me. You know what I mean? So I, so I have that. And then I own their own, there's a tube mic that I have. It's an NT1 or NT something. It's one that you have to plug in through a tube system and plug that into your interface. Give you that the most warm sound ever. I love that mic. I have part of it because my homie, uh, <laughs> me and him was using it. And I think I, I have the mic and I think he still have the tube side. So I couldn't really connect it. And I really didn't bother him about, hey man, was the, you know, by then I was working on, you know, with other mics. But anyway, just giving you, you know, my little history. So I, I respect both companies. Um, I would say Mackie has more of a, more of a range. It It covers a heavier a heavy side of the industry, you know, they have a bunch of speakers, a bunch of mixers, and then they just recently tapped into this this deal 
you know, with live podcasting, live stream, that type of thing. But if I can remember correctly, and I may have the timeline backwards, but I do remember the Rollcaster being one of the first things that I heard about in terms of a mixer, a digital mixer being catered towards podcasts and live streamers such as myself. If Mackie was doing something around that time, I didn't really know about it. So, and then I, I'm also not going to just grab Mackie stuff because I don't know. It seemed like an older, you know what I mean? Like older company that, you know, make a lot of loud system, PA, PA systems and, and whatnot, you know. I wasn't really into that, you know what I mean? Although I work with, you know, when I'm in that field, I'm working with those type of mixers, but I didn't have a a desire to buy any of their, any more of their equipment for my studio setup because I've gotten into personas and I have their monitors and pretty much all of their, well, not all of their, but a lot of their gear to cater towards what I do in the home production scenario, right? So that's kind of what what happened, you know, for me. But when I was looking for a simpler setup, well, not simpler, but something that made sense for what I'm doing because as I saw in the other video, I had several things just kind of connected into one thing into another. And then when I saw this thing right here, the DL z creator i thought to myself this eliminates a few products that i was linking into each other and it goes straight to the to the stream in a way that I, that is really cool you know what i mean and then i found out that robot them out you know it's not it's not a bad thing but i think for me Rode was really known for their mic that i have and then you know i didn't hear much from them like innovation or like anything just crazy until they put out the wireless go mics then they was all over the place everybody like most live stream podcasts they had that mic that they just clip onto themselves and i think it's really cool and then they put out another version of that and blah 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 and then they buy a powerhouse it actually makes sense to be honest with you it, it makes sense it makes a lot of sense that they did that because maybe with the the roll casters maybe they saw the competition i was like no 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 hold on we're not about to let them outdo us so we're just gonna buy them we're gonna buy them out. I'm not really sure what the real situation was. This is just all speculations. This is just Ella and the way I think, which sometimes is weird and twisted, but that's, this is just my opinion. I don't know if any of you guys are aware of any of this, but I was like, whoa, what's going on? But I say it makes sense because these are two companies that are kind of like in the same field. You know what I'm saying? They, they're kind of on the same wavelength, so to speak. Road is a good name. Mackie is a good name. They both doing audio. And it's like, okay. It, it makes sense. It makes sense. Some of my viewers know where I'm going, and I'm going to see if y'all can, like, see where I'm going next. Some of y'all that have been watching this channel, and you know the way that I talk and how I talk about that you you already know where I'm about to go next. I'm gonna give y'all a moment. You know where I'm going when I say this makes sense. Another company acquiring a company like a road company buying Mackie makes sense. Guess what I'm been finna say next. <laughs> so I'm gonna throw shade a little bit because this was the same thing that happened with personas 
when Personas was acquired, Personas Make Studio One, which is a doll that I use to make beats, mix songs, and I still use it till today. Yeah, I still use it. Um, I never put it down. And even after the acquisition of Fender, I, I do think that they're 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 doing some great things. But when it first happened, it was like that don't that don't make sense. It just didn't make sense to any of us that Fender, a guitar company, acquiring personas. Now for their live stuff, it kind of made sense because personas did spend a lot of time building up their their live PA system. You know what I mean? A lot of times I felt like their live stuff was more priority, which it it might might have been, you know. It's probably Persona's real investment or their real focus, building up a mixer like every other six months. You know, Persona's has mixers for days, bro. Like, uh, man, that's 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 what it is for them. And I just felt like if they spent a little bit more time developing Studio One, which is one of those things that I feel I feel that a lot of people are spending money on. That's where the money is. Not a lot of people buying PA systems all the time. You know what I mean? But the music production, beat making culture is growing. And so developing Studio One even more. And I, when I say that, I mean like doing things that other dolls do like able to live, maybe Bitwig, Cubase, maybe. I mean, I get it. The team, some of the team broke away and, and you know, now in Studio One is, is being the focus, you know, where they kind of bring it up, I mean, work on whatever. You guys know the story and how it goes, but I was just like, wow. Fender? Fender buying, it, it didn't make sense. But, you know, as I see things progress, I'm like, I'm just, I'm, I backed off a little bit more because some of the updates been pretty cool. You know, I just, I just felt like things were just going to go, you know, down the hill from, from, from there. Seeing some of the things that people were saying about Fender's history and buying you know, a guitar company buying a doll company, maybe. I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe the way I'm thinking about it is backwards or whatever. Because maybe Fender was after their live PA stuff, so that their guitar players can play into those systems. You know what I mean? But for production, B making, you know. Kind of just felt like all the all of the updates and features and things, or the type of updates that they were doing, was not really geared towards producers. It was sweet. It's really sweet on the mixing side, hands down. Like mixing a project in Studio One is hands down one of the best experience. I I that's my opinion about that, but um. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. This is kind of kind of my thoughts. I guess it makes sense, you know. When I when I end this video, I'm gonna feel good about it. You know, I'm gonna feel good about this. Maybe there's a different story be, behind it. I'm not really sure what's gonna happen in regards to. The Mackie line, will it be more road influence or will road allow Mackie to continue doing what they're doing? Because I recently looked on their site and I will say this. I will say some of the designs I saw with some of their products, man, Mackie was Mackie was doing some amazing things. You know what I mean? But, but you know, I don't know.
It could be the same thing as personas. You know, maybe maybe there was a budget thing. You know, Mackie wasn't really selling too much, which could be the reason why they start doing live streaming, you know, components for for you know the in this industry because this is now a new thing that everybody is getting into now everybody is podcasting everybody is live streaming and so when i saw their lineup mackie that is i was impressed with some of their gear and i would like to get my hands on some of those smaller units for like live streaming straight to your phone or out there in the world um or maybe something smaller for my desk set up you know what I mean? You know, I would love to review more of their products because I think they do have some pretty cool designs that they have on their on their site. And like I say, like the quality of Mackie has always been top tier to me, in my opinion. So, you know what? Have, in in terms of acquisition, what would made sense if Mackie bought Personas? <laughs> That would have made way better sense to me. You know what I mean? Or Rode, since Rode is the big dog. You know what I mean? They don't want to vote Mackie. Rode buying personas. That would have made sense to me. And I would have been I would have been cool. I would still talk about it, obviously. But that would have made better sense to me. But Fender? Buying persona, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. I don't know if I could ever live that down. It's just, it's just that Fender is a guitar company, and I don't know if I can, like, fully. I guess over time, over over time, I'll eventually accept it. I guess. I will say that I do see a l little things here and there that are changing with personas i feel like they are incorporating more of the urban side to it which which was a big deal to me you know working with products that returns the favor you know what i mean like feature us on their websites and videos and you know our style music urban afro pop you know things like that in some of their marketing material you know companies like bitwig like you when when you go to anything bitwig you you understand that it's for tech people techno techno producers you know dance music maybe because of how it's designed. I still use Bitwig because I like to work against the grain sometimes. I'm trying to introduce the urban side to, to Bitwig. But um, I don't know. That's just my thoughts. Those are my thoughts. That's how I feel. Again, you guys let me know what you what you think about the road acquisition with Mackey. Y'all cool with it? Does it make sense that y'all see it coming? You know? I think you, it, it probably, I'm probably going off, you know, off, off the, off the bridge when I say it probably made sense if Mackie bought, I'm sorry, if Fender bought Mackie, it, that that made better sense to me because of what Mackie was doing they, their 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 strong points were in live PA systems guitar players love that you know what I mean like that 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 kind of made sense and maybe maybe Mackie because they make all of the, the mixers making the amp for Fender, it may not be 
too far fetched. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But but you know, that is the element of personas in the terms of the PA system that perhaps Fender was really after. Which I guess makes sense. And Studio One just so happened to be another part, another department that personas had and people like me is like, what? What is going on? You know what I mean? I don't know. All I'm saying is one of these companies need to pick me up, put me on their staff. That's all I'm saying. I need to get with somebody because at the end of the day, it's all pro audio stuff and it's just these are things that I'm into. I love it. You know, I would love to be a part of a of, of a team to, you know, I don't know, talk about it or help creative minds. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. At this point, I'm just talking now. But, uh, Ella, B-Culture, Lifestyle Governed by Art.